Coming up on today's Code Bear Daily, a huge weekend of sport ahead, and we've got you covered each and every way. I'll tell you that much. We're talking player props, game picks, best bets, rate my multi, an actual half-decent donation as well because Alex isn't here. But what are you looking at, Stats Guy? Uh, continuing on for some NBL Friday night and some tasty AFLW matchup. Very nice. I'm going to look at a whole mess of NBA and NFL. So check it out. It's all on Code Bear Daily right now. Welcome to Code Bear Daily. Woo! TGIF, am I right? It is Friday, October 27, all day. This is episode 224 of Code Bet Daily. I am your host, James Clements. I'm the editor of a good website. It's called Code Bet. I'm also the host of NBA Australia or NFL Australia. What else am I on? Fox Sports Lab, NFL, NBA, a bunch of other stuff as well. And I'm just here hanging out with my good buddy, one of the pontiffs. We've got the stats guy here. What's going on, stats guy? Absolutely. I thought you were going to introduce yourself as Ric Flair there with the woos. But uh, yeah, pumped to be here. Let's let's get some uh, winning tips going. Well, I feel I feel like you've got the uh, championship belt at the moment with some of the picks from the NBL last night. Uh, Very happy, yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to jump on the... Who did I have? A Cairns plus... Plus one and a half. Yeah, I took them head to head. Yeah, so I was a bit filthy for that one. And the buzzer, pretty much a buzzer. But maybe I've got the title belt then because I went two for two in the NBL last night. Just so. Yeah, I went two from two in the over unders and the some of the uh, player props, but yeah, not the uh, match picks. Yeah, the match picks was a bit chaos in the NBL last night with uh, New Zealand just giving up the ghost completely to Adelaide and getting smoked. So I don't know. This is what happens when you add a actual scorer in the backcourt. For uh, yeah, it's actually helping. <laughs> this is Code Hoops Daily, basically. I think at the moment, no, we've got lots of stuff. It's codes, it's betting, and daily. It's Code Bet Daily. We're talking player props, game picks, best bets, rate my multis, and of course, it's Friday. So, even though Alex is not here with us, he died in that grease fire. <laughs> I mean, he's more pie now than man. Uh, <laughs> we have a donation because I've stepped up to the plate and come up with a massive NBA Times NFL multi uh, for your weekend stuff. But that's it. It's a big weekend ahead. So, what am I looking at today? NBA weekend, specifically the games tomorrow, because this is one of the more frustrating aspects of NBA again, is that especially early on in the season. Uh, you even saw this yesterday with the Suns game, and it turns out KD might not be playing today as well. Really? The Ooh. player markets are a little bit more sort of floppy, shall we say, right? Yes. As they sort of figure out who's going to play, who's not going to play. Uh, they get markets up, they get markets down, whatever. So, um, But I'll be looking at a bunch of the game picks and probably just some suggestions more so than actual markets because there's just so few of them open at the moment uh, for tomorrow's NBA games, as well as a big, big, big week eight of the NFL. So... Plenty of stuff to dig into there for me. What about you, Stats Guy? Uh, yeah, some NBL. I'm going to yeah do some player props and game picks for that. And then a bit of AFLW, a bit of a rate my multi. I think there's some value there. Very, very nice. Let's get into it. Let's do some player props. Player props, 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 props. Uh, <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> I'm like just running off into the tunnel when I do that one. Uh, NBA Saturday, <laughs> there is an absolute cracker of a game uh, with uh, Stats Guy's beloved Celtics. He's wearing a Celtics hat right now. Absolutely. What happened last time the Celtics and Heat played, Stats Guy? Uh, I was there. It was uh, bad. Just uh, a lot of guys off the bench. Shooters were just shooting <laughs> lots of threes. Uh, not much defense from the Celtics. Uh, lots of angry people yelling, get rid of uh, Joe Mazzola. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to fire this Joe Mazzola kid. He's horrible, oh. dude. A lot of that vibe. Uh, of course, the Heat did absolutely smash Boston in Game 7, 103-84 last time they met. Pretty funny, pretty great. Thing is, this is a completely different Boston team. We saw them in action yesterday. We also saw Miami just pull one out of their rear against... Yeah, completely different Miami team as well. Yep, Miami gave up a bunch of starters in the hope of getting Dame Lillard. They did not. And then, of course, you got the extreme Zinger meal and Giroux Holiday and look like a real absolute juggernaut. Uh, of course, you only just sort of limped over the line against the Knicks, but that's just how the Knicks yeah. play the Celtics. So the fact that you actually won that game is pretty big for me. I'll take it, yeah. Uh, but of course... In those games, like we saw Jason Tatum really come out of his shell, I think, in that series and just sort of a bit of swagger. Of course, it all sort of fell apart in Game 7. But I think this is the – I look at this uh, Heat roster and go, all right, so who guards Jason Tatum on True. this current Heat iteration? I have no answers for it because <laughs> – are they going to swing Jimmy Butler up a couple of positions? Are they going to try to play Kevin Love on Jason Tatum? Is going to go for 30 plus in this game in a heartbeat? Because uh, at least Bam can probably try to at least bottle up Porzingis a little bit. But Tatum is going to run completely roughshod over this Miami team tomorrow. 
So I love Tatum 30 plus against Miami just because they literally have no one to guard him. And he was really good in game one, went for 30 plus. You could see him do this all season. And like your flip side, Jimmy Butler, I think if you want to eke out like a bit of a Butler play, 20 points, five rebounds, five assists is usually sort of baseline, especially against the uh, the hated Celtics. Um, but they do now have so many more like weapons to throw at him. Like they can go, right, we can rotate Jeru Holiday, Jalen Brown, whoever we want to put on Jimmy Butler. So I'm not going to go too chaotic for Jimmy Butler's points totals, but I still think he gets to 20 because there's so few other players on that team who can do that. So I think that's where we'll go for that game. There's also an absolute belter as well with the uh, OKC Thunder with my beloved Josh Giddy, the mop top mumba, the wee Bix kid. I love him. You could actually probably set a benchmark for him of 16, 6, and 6 as well. But I'm going to look at SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's been absolutely unreal. What awesome. the last, I don't know, 10 months, like the back half, like the last two thirds of last season, he was absolutely on fire. Um, Average over 30 all year last year. He's going to go for 30 again against the Bulls. I think the Bulls... Oh, they play again. Oh, look at Bulls. The biggest <laughs> sort of loser from this, uh, from the opening day, right, is just the simple idea of, yeah, they stink. Oh, no, they're playing mm. Cleveland. What am I talking about? No, they play... I was going to say, they wouldn't play straight away. Cleveland, they? up against uh, OKC. OKC, this is still like a pretty defensively bereft Cavs team, is... That's what I was trying to say. I just didn't read my notes. Uh, they good. have Maxi Struess, who we saw light up yesterday. We saw Donnie Mitchell light up as well. 27 each for those. And no go the throw Jared Allen probably. So we saw like in the Cavs game yesterday against Brooklyn, Brooklyn just attacking the rim time and time and time again. SGA, that is his bread and butter. He's going for 30 plus yeah. against the Cavs. Don't you worry about that. Flip side, I'd probably go Donnie Mitchell as well just to sort of probably eke over that 25 point mark. But I'll get to this later. I think, okay, so you're absolutely on a hater. And this Cavs team, just a little bit wonky, just so. Um, and in the NFL, there are no markets out for some of these player ones that I can find at the moment. Of course, we've got Friday morning football kicking off in a second. But uh, for the Sunday games, if you're looking at a couple of them, I think Tyreek Hill against the Pats. The Pats kind of had the book on Tyreek Hill and sort of limit him in their earlier meeting this season. This is in Miami, however. I think he goes ballistic. 100 plus receiving yards, two plus touchdowns. I would not be surprised. I think Miami mm-hmm. put the absolute smack down on my beloved Patriots in this one. And like, there will be a lot of talk. Oh, Bill Belichick knows how to check Tyreek Hill. They'll, they'll, just, they'll really limit him. They'll play too heavy. Like just they'll load up the box. And like, that's, he didn't top a hundred last week, Hill. He had so many targets, uh, but they really sort of just focused in on making sure that's like, all right, if he gets five yards, that's cool. Just don't let him get 50. And you're like, yeah, yeah. It's not a bad game plan. It's pretty good. Mm. I think he absolutely breaks one out though against this Pats team who are missing like two of the biggest pieces on their defense. So that's probably my favorite uh, specific player prop for your Sunday night, Monday, early Monday morning NFL gear. Um, Across that, I mean, the rest of the NFL slate is a pretty weird one uh, this week. And, it's really hard to sort of dig into and go, right, who do I really like? Like maybe Tony Pollard for like a good receiving, uh, sorry, a good rushing game against the Rams. Uh, they do have a pretty good interior defense though. I think Dallas one should win that one. But the rest of the games, it's like, it's a bit of a mishmash. Like even someone who'd look at and go, Philly, AJ Brown, he should smash Washington. Washington and Philly always just play really squirrely games. But so I'd look at maybe A.J. Brown for 100-plus and a touchdown as well because A.J. Brown is just doing that week in, week out. But outside sure, of that, yeah. there are so many weird games. Like Cleveland-Seattle, I don't want to trust anything in that game. <laughs> KC-Denver, Denver are just very, very silly when it comes to like everything. <laughs> and KC, it's like, oh, well, if Taylor Swift is there, you can bank like 100-plus yards for Travis Kelsey in the touchdown in front of his pop star Bo. Like, <laughs> but Apart from that, like it's just a weird, weird week because I don't even trust Baltimore and Arizona that much, like in terms of player props to really lean on. So there you go. There's a couple. I'll dig in lots more in the uh, game picks. So stats guy, what about you for some player props? Yeah, some uh, NBL back tonight, the Friday night games. There's two. Uh, looking at the Tasmania Jack Jumpers and Melbourne United game first at 6 30. Gonna have a look at Jack McVeigh. I think he provides a bit of points, uh, betting value here. Averaging 15.8 points uh, per game for the Jackies. Really efficient at 49%. And he's been uh, getting better each week from three as well. So he's he's been yeah, a threat in the paint and then also a threat outside. 15 plus points just to uh, get uh, his over, just his average at home against United is $2.45. So he's averaging 15.8. I think at home, especially this Jackie's side has been 
really good. Uh, they've actually surprised me, been a little bit better than, than I thought. They beat the Kings last week, and McVay's been a real uh, part of that, especially the last three weeks. He's just been tearing it up. So $2.45, I was really surprised just to get 15 plus. Uh, then I'm going to have a look at the Wildcats taking on the Bullets later tonight at 9.30. Keanu Pinder, I've been all over him in the preseason. He's been awesome. Uh, averaging 15.7 rebounds. I'm going to try same sort of thing, try and get around his average. I think he's going to lift for the home crowd uh, at the jungle just to get to his averages. So 15 plus points, six plus rebounds is $2.10. So there's been a couple of games where he's got 25 points and 10 plus rebounds. I just need to get to his average and I think he can against the Bullets. If uh, Big Bang as Baines was playing, I think this would be a bit of a different matchup because harder to score against him. But without him, maybe Rocco comes in, but he's still a bit inexperienced. Pinda, I reckon, just going to tear it up in the paint. That is a great call because this is an absolute backs against the wall spot for the Wildcats, right? Like they need a win. Yeah, they yeah. might get fired like if they lose yeah. this game because the Bull A's are very up and down. We know that, yeah. and they'll have games where they look awesome, then look horrible, and, and then just drop off. Yeah, the yeah. Wildcats should absolutely demolish them out west, and Pinda will be a really big part of that going up against like that sort of pretty inexperienced uh, battery of big men that they have. Sands bangers. Uh, yes. The Tassie Melbourne one's pretty interesting. McVeigh, I mean, if you just read his uh, Twitter, like, yeah, you'll just get super inspired <laughs> and just think he's a crazy brain genius. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I think that's amazing. He's averaging going 15 already this season. Like, yeah. he does have just those. He's like the, uh, he's the points in between the points where, like, and then he'll have like a massive one. You're like, where did that come from? Goes on re- weird stretches. I think his career is only average around 10. Yeah. And then this season, he's just. Upped it massively. Five, five he, yeah, look, so. the absolute goods. This is a huge game. It's a huge mm. test at home against United. That game is going to be unreal. Great. A couple of calls there, Stats Guy. I enjoyed it. Nice. Obviously, because I'm still talking. Yeah. Uh, let's, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's do some game picks. What's your best match or game pick? All right. Big, big, big slate in the NBA for Saturday. Oh, there is nothing better than a Saturday morning. Uh, just like prop up on the couch, recover from the night before. <laughs> and you have an entire day of NBA basketball. Like the NBA. Oh, so many games. Uh, a couple of my favorite ones, just game picks uh, against the spread. Celtics minus seven and a half against Miami. Miami did not fill me with any sort of confidence after that game one. The Celtics, just all the variability that they have on the court now just makes them a tough beat. Minus seven and a half, I'd be all over that. I think they smashed them as a little bit of a revenge uh, for last year's game seven walloping. I mean, I think I talked about this either on NBA Australia or our show yesterday, Stats Guy, but yeah, it's a bit silly to be like, revenge in game one or two of a regular. <laughs> yeah, it's not really real revenge, this, but you can feel a little bit better. The Celtics <laughs> really need to get a leg up over the top of this mm. Miami team. And I think this is where it's I know, they're in our heads. <laughs> uh, Denver are only minus four and a half against Memphis. I have no idea why this line is that slow. Really? Denver are going to kill wow. Memphis. Memphis don't have any big men. Jaron Jackson Jr. can't stay on the floor. They've got Marcus Smart. They've got what Desmond Bain and very little else on that Memphis team. Denver just put the, like fed the Lakers into a wood chipper the other day. Like <laughs> they're going to kill Memphis. I don't care that it's Memphis. Mm. Denver are going to smash them. Uh, Detroit Charlotte. I'm wearing the Charlotte hat. I struggled with this one. I wanted to talk about it just a little bit because Detroit really pushed Miami right to the edge, but they were getting killed early on. They bounce back. It's all okay. They've got 47 centers. They've got 87 point guards. Very little in between. <laughs> Charlotte came back and beat Atlanta. The weirdest part about this game, stats guys, is that if Charlotte win, they're up 2-0. and If Detroit lose, they're 0-2. And it oh, it's just weird. feel yeah. that way. I feel like Detroit should win this one or at least keep it really close. I'm going to go Pistons plus four in that. Orlando, yep. I don't know why this line is 2 and a half. That's a short line. 2 and a half. Orlando yeah. horrible. They are hor- Orlando are good. Orlando are two and a half point favorites on the road in Portland. It's like road favorites. Whoa, that's a bit weird. No, Orlando are going to kill Portland. So give me Orlando <laughs> minus two and a half and away we go. A couple of extra little ones. Spurs minus two against Houston. I don't want to bet the line in that one because I don't know if the Spurs can sort of keep up even with a team like Houston who did nothing in game one. I reckon they, that's a short, a small one. You know what you can do. Go the over. 228 yes, and a half. Thank yes. you very much, ladies and gentlemen. 228 and a half. Go the over. Same with Brooklyn Dallas. I do worry about the line, but Brooklyn plus six is still pretty good. Because uh, yeah. defensively, if they can just they've got so many wings and big guards and stuff to throw at Luca and Kyrie that they should probably at least keep it close with Dallas. Again, though, go the over. 228 and a half. <laughs> Neither of these like Dallas are 
play any defense. Brooklyn, we saw them yesterday against Cleveland go over this line already. So away we go. And then the other one, Warriors Kings. Talk about a revenge game for last year as well. The Kings got knocked out of the playoffs game seven by the Warriors. I can say the Warriors plus two and a half. I think they're a smart team who have the book on yep. Sacramento already. Like they've just beaten them in a game seven, like a seven game series. They have will have scouted them to the absolute wazoo. Sacramento feeling really good that just sheer pace with which they beat Utah yesterday. Awesome. Go the over in this one as well. 240 and a half. It's a huge, huge over and under. But that's massive. I think but, yeah. The Warriors plus two and a half and the Kings over and the yeah, against the Kings and the over two forty and a half is where I'm gonna land. Love that. And then a couple of NFL ones. Philly minus six and a half against Washington. If you want to look at like a favorite, that's probably my lean because Washington will probably play this squarely, but Washington have also been really bad. Um, they can't protect Sam Howell. And if you put up seven points like they did last week against bad teams, Philly will destroy you. Pittsburgh at home plus two and a half against Jacksonville. There's a great, this is like the weirdest one stats guy that I want to, I wanted to talk out a little bit. Yep. Pittsburgh at home as an underdog under Mike Tomlin. It's like 14, three and two all time. They just cover every time, every time. And you look at that and go, well, they'll probably cover now. And that's probably my pick. I still think Jacksonville win this game in a stupid, horrible, weird, gross way. Jacksonville are a better team. Yep. Pittsburgh keep winning weird games out of nowhere. If it falls apart, it might fall apart at home. And you're like, this is the one game. Well, I will. you've just got to go them as the underdog. I'm still going to go them as the underdog. I don't really think they win this, though. But if I'm going to get two and a half points, I'll probably take them. Jacksonville probably win by two. And then New England, Miami, as I mentioned, Miami going to kill my beloved Pats in this one. Minus one yes. and a half, over 46 and a half. Miami have beaten up on bad teams. We know that, but the Pats are a bad team. So I think there's going to be a big, big, big one. And here's a bit of a rate my mold. Rate my mold. Cincinnati plus four against the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners might be on a backup quarterback. They won't have Debo again. Cincinnati off a big rest. Four-point underdogs. Even if San Francisco win this, I think it's by a field goal. So if I'm getting plus four, I'm taking that. New England, Miami, I already talked that one out. Miami minus nine and a half. Baltimore minus eight and a half against Arizona. That's a key number. Um, even if you want to make that an alternate line, because I think that was eight and a half was through top sport on our site. So other places have it nine and a half. But if you can dock, knock that down on alternate eight and a half, I feel a little bit better about that. Uh, Baltimore are way better than Arizona. Baltimore were incredible last week in destroying the Detroit Lions. Arizona stink. We get that. At home, though, they tend to play hard. I want to keep it under double digits. I want to keep it under nine. So I'm going to have the eight and a half for Baltimore. And then that Pittsburgh-Jacksonville one. I'm just going to lean into it. I just... Underdog, Mike Tomlin at home. It's the sort of square dumb play. But I'm going to do it anyway (laughs) because why not? And then I'll get to over like the $13.80 mark. And there you go, stats guy. Rate my multi. I'll give it a... Eight or nine. I'll give it a nine. I yeah, you you're not convincing me on the uh, Pittsburgh because every time you're like, eh, but <laughs> but the the stats do back it up for Pittsburgh to cover. So yeah, I'll give it a nine. We could replace that with KC minus seven against Denver, because I don't think there's any way that KC don't just demolish or eight Denver. But I also hate interdivision games for that sort of stuff. Like even though I've just gone New England, Miami, but uh yeah. So you could probably replace KC and Denver in there. Um, there you go. So there's my awesome. my multi. There's a bunch of game picks. That's so many game picks. Uh, what about you? Stats awesome. Guy? Uh, I didn't write this in, but just to start off quickly, I just wanted to have a look at the EP odds uh, if they've changed. Uh, you still got Tottenham who are leading the league, a uh, dollar eighty. They play in the morning uh, against Crystal Palace at six a.m. So if you want to get on one overnight, I think a dollar eighty for Tottenham who are top of the table. Crystal Palace is a decent team at home, but that's a great price there in absolutely under unbelievable form under Ange. And then you get a dollar eighty as well for Newcastle against Wolves. Uh, Wolves are decent, but again, Newcastle are the best uh, scorers in the whole league. So both of them, $1.80, I think is a really good price. I just wanted to check that EPL before I get into some NBL. I'm going to do a bit of an NBL rate my multi. Uh, rate my multi. All right. So uh, Jackie's uh, Jack Jumpers are playing in Melbourne United tonight at uh, 6.30, I believe. I'm going to go the over of 170 and a half. Uh, that's really low. That's probably the lowest uh, over under I've seen almost all season. Uh, United, they've been having a lot of their two and five, uh, five of their matches have gone under, which has been a bit surprising. 
But you got the Jackies, who I think are the third best offense in the league, averaging 92 points. I think at home they can get around that point. And then United, they have the scores to yeah, catch up to that score. So I think 170, even if they play solid defense, you can easily get over that. So that's the first leg. Uh, the Wildcats head-to-head against the Bullets. Didn't want to take them at the line because the Wildcats have just been all over the shop the last couple of weeks. But I do think they have to win at home. They might have a riot if uh, the Jungle yeah, don't get a win tonight. So I really think they'll beat the Bullets. Uh, Phoenix minus three and a half against the Breakers. The Breakers looked really average uh, the other night. Uh, and Phoenix at home have been really solid, so I don't mind the minus three and a half there. Then I'm going to have uh, Kings head-to-head uh, in Cairns as they take on the Taipans. So the four-leg multi there is 170 and a half points, the over for the Jackies uh, against United. Wildcats head-to-head, Phoenix minus three and a half, and Kings head-to-head. That gets you $6.77 with Labrox. That's pretty good. I like this a lot, especially that Phoenix minus three and a half against the Breakers line. Like the yeah. over-under for Jackies United is always interesting just because you sort of look at that and go, well, 170, that should be... It just big. feels really low, yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'll pay it. As like, Especially like United can uh, put up a score. They've got enough talent there and so do the Jack Jumpers, obviously. So yeah, I don't mind that. A- I didn't want to do a match pick in that one either because I feel like that's going to be really close. Yeah, yeah, I do want... like My only worry would be that the Jackies United turns into like a weird defensive slog out of nowhere. And you're like, what's Maybe, yeah. man? How is it 80-83? <laughs> what just... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so I'll give that probably a nine because I really like it. Obviously, yeah. the Tassie, Melbourne over the Wildcats to beat the Boulay or else Craig Hutchinson might get, just, <laughs> I don't know, not allowed back in the WA ever again. Um, Maybe. Phoenix minus three and a half over the Breakers. It's the way the Breakers are playing as well. And they lost. Yeah, they uh, look really cheap. them hurt his knee, I think, last game. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens or, with that. It was a leg injury. It might have been an Achilles. Who knows? So. Uh, and Taipans yeah. Kings, yeah, the Taipans weren't great last night. Obviously, losing on a buzzer beater against. Yeah, Taipans. I think Kings have to bounce back as well. They've had a tough few weeks as well. I'll pay it. So, All right. yeah. Good stuff. Let's do some best bets. It's best bets. It's best bets. It's time for all the best bets. Very nice. Do you want to start this one off, Sats guy? Because I'll finish off with uh, all my stuff and then the donation. All right. A uh, bit of AFLW, rate my multi. Got another one, Gerald. If you rate <laughs> my multi. Can never have too many you rate my multis. Uh, I'm going to start off with Gold Coast head-to-head against GWS. Gold Coast have been really good. They're pushing for the finals. Uh, they just got a star midfield uh, led by Charlie uh, Robottom. She's been absolutely awesome in there. Uh, then I'm going to go Essendon versus Carlton. I'm going to take Carlton plus three and a half. I don't understand why Carlton are underdogs here. Essendon have been absolutely woeful. Unless they're playing at Windy Hill, which is sort of their first and second home ground, they just they are playing there, but Carlton has been a much better aren't they? <laughs> I was, about to, I was about to say it was an icon park, but it's not. But I do think Carlton are a much better side. Uh, they've just got you know, stars up forward and are a lot taller. And I think a taller t- side in AFLW is uh, really helpful. Uh, Sydney plus 11 and a half versus Collingwood. I think these teams are really even. Sydney, everyone just doesn't rate Sydney because they didn't win a game last year. And they're also pushing for that final spot. They're sort of in that mid, mid-table. Uh, so plus 11 and a half, I, I'm going to absolutely take that. Sydney, they lost their star Ruckman, uh, Ali Morford, but... They proved last week with a 96 to 30 win over the Dogs uh, that they still can yeah hit, kick a score. Uh, then Hawthorne head to head against Port Adelaide Hawks. Uh, I think that's just a dollar forty just to round off the multi. Uh, they're a pretty solid side as well. They've improved a lot since last year, whereas Port have just been getting a lot of big scores kicked on them. So I'm gonna go Gold Coast head to head. Carlton plus three and a half. Sydney plus eleven and a half. And Hawthorne to beat Port Adelaide is six dollars twenty six. Very nice. I'll rate that. Right, I'll mm. give that a good eight, eight and a half. I like that a lot. Nice. I do like yeah. the yeah, the Essen and Carlton one. Like the fact that it's actually at Windy Hill though is a bit of a problem. I think. So. Yeah, they have been solid, but Carlton have definitely been the better side, and they've surprised me this year. Very nice. Good one. All right, let's do some uh, best bets for me. Uh, Houston and San Antonio, as I mentioned, that over is one of my favorite, and Brooklyn Dallas uh, that over as well. Like easily my two favorite bets for tomorrow's game. Yeah, awesome. Uh, because there will not be a giant amount of defense on either side. I think of that. The especially like the two twenty eight. The fact that it's only two twenty eight for both. It's like yeah. We're going 115s plus on both sides, <laughs> so let's go. Uh, the other ones that we have here for the Bears, Birds are, I think we've got an NFL primetime on, what's this, Monday morning, I think it is. It's the Chargers, Chicago. So I'm going to throw it to char- the Chargers. Just, they stink. I hate them so much. I can't <laughs> quit them. I just can't quit them. Oh. Chicago are horrible. They've got T-Bags, Tyson Badgett as their quarterback, and – this is the fifth worst defense versus the eighth 
worst defense. They're both bottom four against the pass. Wow, this is so blockbuster. I'm going to lean into the pass catches in that case for touchdowns, obviously, because it's two bottom four defenses against the pass. So Keenan Allen, anytime touchdown for the Chargers. Austin Eckler as well. Anytime touchdown is handy for a pass catching running back because anytime just gives them a across yeah. both formats, of course, rushing in for one and also receiving. And that's what Eckler does. Um, but on the Chicago side as well, like the Chargers are that bad. I think DJ Moore can get in for one too. So away we go for that one. And then you'd probably go the Chargers at the line, which is eight and a half. Uh, and I want to stay clear of the over-under for this one. So it's still a bit wonky, but I still think that gets you to about $9.50, which is very fun. And there's probably like a couple of best bets for the NFL for Monday morning. So load that one up before, you know, at least check the, I don't know, make sure that Eckler's actually playing on Monday morning because <laughs> he's always a little bit iffy, but probably some of my best ones. But I think the NBA slate tomorrow offers up a couple of pretty good Shoot, uh, opportunities in that NFL one, I'm just going to lean on the Chargers as one of my best bets as well just because Chicago are really bad. <laughs> like If LA lose this, Brandon Staley's going to get fired. And <laughs> get rid of it's him. just like, you pack her up, boys, done. And you're playing against like a dude who was a Division Two quarterback. So anyway, yeah. all right, let's do it. It's everyone's favorite thing on a Friday. It's time for the donation. Donation. This one might actually win. Donation. It might actually win because Alex isn't doing it. So, oh, he won one. I think we're still up. On, I think we're still up. If we just, oh, if you put it all together for the entire year, we're still up. It's like, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Denver minus four and a half over Memphis, as I mentioned. Knicks. That's a great bet. Knicks plus two against Atlanta in Atlanta. Atlanta lose that first game in Charlotte just in horrible fashion. The Knicks also lose against the Celtics. I think the Knicks bounce back. I don't think they start 0-2. So give me the plus two for the Knickerbockers. OKC, plus three and a half in Cleveland. I love that. OKC going to run rampant against this Cleveland defense. Orlando, minus two and a half in Portland, as I mentioned earlier. There are four very, very solid, tasty NBA ones I like. And then we're going to mix those up with some NFL picks. New England at Miami. We're going the Dolphins, minus nine and a half. KC, minus seven against Denver, as I mentioned earlier as well. Dallas minus six at home against the Rams. A little bit squirrely. The Rams can throw the ball, but Dallas's defense should be too good for Matt Stafford and co. And they should win by just a touchdown, if not more. So the minus six, I'll take that. And of course, the Chargers minus eight and a half, as we mentioned, against the Chicago Bears. This eight leg donation gets you to $172.79. Stats guy. How can that lose? I might have to give that. That's the best rate my multi. I mean, sorry, donation we've had in a while for a Friday. I'm excited about that. I'm going to chuck that on right now. Uh, I'll give it a. I'll give it a nine and a half. And nine just and the half uh, for the donation. Just, just the charges one is that that extra half. It just, just take a crumb. Would but, be yeah, the most like. funny aspect of this <laughs> is that if we nail all of those NBA picks and then we go through the NFL slate, nail those, and then we're sitting here on a Monday morning watching charges, charges against the horrible Bears somehow. Not <laughs> Eight and a half points. It would be the most great, amazing, bad beat story, but it would also break my heart. So what, what should happen? $172.79. That is That's a awesome. great donation. All right. And there you go. That is it for this week. Uh, another big week of Cobet Daily in the books. We'll be back on deck on Monday and Tuesday next week. So get right around this show and, of course, all the other shows. Hold all tickets uh, with punters.com.au and Betfair. NBA Australia, NFL Australia. We have the EPL show up as well, of course, by its own little self standing over there in the uh, in Spotify, but also just in the daily feed. Uh, so like, review, and star, all of those. And chuck a follow for COVID across all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, X, and threads. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. It's been a good week. It's been a fun week. It has. How good's NBA yeah. being back, though? Jeez, it makes, oh, it makes, so good. makes this a lot easier. <laughs> of course, you can stay up to date with that with the uh, Daily NBA Australia show. Uh, send in any questions via the socials, any bets, any multis you want, rated. Away we go. And I think that's it. Thank you, Stats Guy, for doing a bunch of heavy lifting while Alex, you know, just sloughed off and did nothing. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks to Gerald for producing. He does a great job. And, of course, thanks to me. So what do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. Uh, Mayo picks coming in. Happy punting. Have a good weekend. We will catch you on Monday. Code Bed Daily out. Imagine what you could be buying instead. 
For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.